Welcome back, everyone, of the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here at NCAA Football 14. As today, Westlake heads out to Salt Lake City, Utah, to take on their good friends, the Utah Utes. And Westlake is coming off a very disappointing loss a couple of weeks ago against the defending champion Baylor Bears. As Westlake was number one at the time of the game, they have now fallen to number 10. They did have a bye week in the bet between the Baylor game and this one, so they'll have some time to think about it and potentially take out their anger on their rival, the Utah Utes. And Westlake did not make the national championship last year because Bailey lost one game in non-conference to Texas. And could we see similar with Baylor? We very well might, especially with the amount of teams at the top, as unless they are going to kill each other off the top of the top 25, Westlake's chances are slim, but the only thing they can do is win out. Welcome everybody to Rice Zessel Stadium here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Westlake ranked number 10, taking on the Utah Utes. It's been a roller coaster season for Utah. They're 2 0 in Pac 12 play, but they're 0 3 in non conference play, including a week one loss to Eastern Washington. And let me tell you, that game wasn't the closest. Eastern Washington won convincingly. And of course, remember, these two teams are rivals. The Great Salt Lake Clash, these two teams face off against each other every year. And this one's no different. This is a game Westlake should absolutely win. I mean, they're playing a rival, and they take these rivalry games very seriously. They're coming off a bye week. They're hungry after their loss against Baylor. So Westlake should have this one, as there's the senior Owen Jackson bringing down the quarterback Eric White on second down. Jackson was able to read the offense, get by the guard and the tackle, and he's able to make the play, setting up a third down and four for the Utah. Third down and four for Utah. Can they convert? And if they don't get it, will they go for it? They are in four down territory. It'll just be a run for Dorsey. And he's going to be lit up in the backfield by Owen. Hits Dick Jackson. Ray Johnson made the initial contact, because you can see right there, and then Jackson just flipped him on his back. It's hard to believe Owen Jackson still does not have a fumble force in his entire career. Anyway, 4th and 7. Utah's going to go for it. 5 wide set for White. He's under pressure. Taking a shot deep. And he connects with J.J. McClellan. 40 yards for the touchdown. And the Utes will take a 7-0 lead. That was a dart from Eric White down the field. Brenton Scott fell on his face. And McClelland burned Andy Pino, and Utah's on the board. In the loss to Baylor, Westlake's offensive line was truly atrocious. They couldn't run the ball to save their lives. And if the Hornets can get the ground game going early, they should have a good chance to win this football game as there's Noah Newton for a gain of 24 of a talented sophomore from Edmonton, Canada. Nice pass from Peyton Curry. This drive has lasted about four or five plays. Patrick Daly has been in the game every single one, so... No Dante Savage yet, which is weird. But I think after that play, Dante Savage will be entering. I don't know what on earth Patrick Daly was doing. He was trying to make something out of nothing. And he loses eight on the play. And he's also injured. So, lose-lose situation, I guess, for Wesley. Patrick Daly low-key deserves to get injured. I mean, who makes that type of dork move just running backwards? I don't get it. Uh, hopefully for Westlake, he is going to be okay as Curtis gets it to Dante Savage, who of course was supposed to be in the backfield, but he hasn't other than now, and he does gain 19 on the reception, bringing the Hornets to the goal line. Here is play number 8 on the drive. It'll be a handoff for Dante Savage, and he is in. Touchdown, Westlake, as that'll be the talented sophomore running back, Dante Savage, with the score. And Westlake will tie this one up at 7 apiece. Luckily for Westlake... Two teams in the top 10 are facing off this week. USC, who the Hornets have already beaten this year, and Notre Dame, and currently it's the Fighting Irish up 21-7. Already three running backs have gotten hurt in this game. Utah's top two rushers, Dorsey and Moore, they will be returning. However, Patrick Daly of Westlake will not be coming back in this game. He has a mild concussion. Here's White on third down. Over to McKinney, and he loses three. That's JPP John Paul Patterson. With the play, initial contact looks like it was from Pino, and that'll set up another interesting fourth down opportunity. It is fourth down and eight, and Utah's going to go for it here. They originally set out the punt team, but then the first quarter ended. Now that we're in the second quarter, they're going to decide to go for it as he tries to get it to Dorsey, who's returned to the game. However, the pass is incomplete. 
And Utah does not convert this time. Here returns Westlake's offense coming off a touchdown drive to start the game off as Peyton Curtis will fake the handoff here on first down. Curtis, he's going to take a shot deep for a wide open man. That's all re Hey, Luco! 62 yards to the house. Aubrey's older brother, Ayo Ayaluko, had some memorable games against the Utah Utes. And now younger brother, Ulri, the redshirt freshman, hopes to do the same. The Hornets will take the lead. Running back Jason Dorsey is back in the game for Utah, as you can see. However, the main ball carrier for them, Thad Moore, is not back yet. But he should return in this game as Owen Jackson with the deflection on third down. Popping the ball loose, and that'll be a three and out. Westlake's offense returns. They lead it 14 to 7. Let's see if they can extend their lead. Here's Peyton Curtis on first down. He's going to hand it off for Savage, who is lit up in the backfield for a loss of four. Have no mercy on your soul, says Justin Davis. Now it's second and 14 after a four yard loss. Curtis will look to throw it. Curtis is going to look for Noah Newton. Newton with the first down! And he whizzes by the defender, still on his feet, brought down at the 20. That'll be a gain of 44 for Noah Newton. Curtis already almost at 150 passing yards on the day. And Westlake has it in the red zone as Newton did an excellent job after the catch on that play, breaking a tackle and using his speed to get to the 20. Third down and goal from the two. Westlake is going to try to punch it in here, and if they don't get it, I wonder if they're going to do on fourth down. It'll be a pass. Curtis looking! And that's all Rie Yaluko with his second touchdown reception of the game. And the Hornets will extend their lead. All Rie Yaluko has two touchdown catches here in the second quarter. And that's why Westlake is up by 14. Here's Thad Moore. Welcome back to the game, kiddo! Has Moore with a nice run of 20 before being wrapped up by Josh Wilson. But still, Utah's offense needs some momentum. And a nice run play like that will certainly do it. Utah's having a nice little drive here. Currently still 21-7. to But they're going to try to make it 21-10 to with the field goal. Exactly two minutes left to go in the half as the kick is up. And it is good. And the Utah Utes will bring the lead down to 21-10. to Or should I say they'll bring their deficit down to 21-10, to obviously. Utah isn't winning. Westlake has the chance to make it a three-score lead entering the locker room. But they're going to need to convert on third down and six here if they want to do that. As Peyton Curtis will look to throw it up the middle just a little. He gets it to Malik Brown. Still on his feet, trying to juke by the defenders. He will gain 18 yards. Nice play right there from Brown. He's had a quiet start to the year. But he was Curtis's favorite target in two weeks ago's loss to Baylor. Third down and goal from the three. Westlake is a perfect three for three on third down so far today. 16 seconds left in the half. Fake handoff over to Dante Savage. Curtis looking. He connects with Wiggins, who drops the football. Nigel Wiggins, this team's most consistent receiver. He never makes drops like that. It is fourth and goal from about the three. Westlake will not go for the field goal. They're going to keep their offense out and try to extend their lead even more. As Curtis, risky pass over to Wiggins, who does catch it this time. And that'll be a touchdown for the junior, Nigel Wiggins. And the Hornets will give themselves a 28-10 lead headed into the locker room bearing something crazy. Quarter number three is officially here, and Utah hasn't played terribly in this one, or at least their offense hasn't been terrible in this one. Same cannot be said for their defense. However, Westlake just looks like the more dominant team, which is to be expected. As here's Savage! That should not have been a first down run for the average running back, but Dante Savage is no average player. As he gets by the three Utah defenders and brings it into the red zone. And he also has 69 yards for the day. Hubba hubba. Fourth down and two from about the seven yard line. Westlake looks like they're going to play it safe. Go for the field goal from true freshman kicker Volker Gantz. He's only two for five this year with field goals. But you can make that three for six as that one is good. It looked a little bit ugly, and it looked a little bit to the right, but it doesn't matter as Gantz does make it. Utah's offense is back, down by 21. They kind of need a miracle at this point. They're not looking too good, as that one's going to be picked off! That's Steve Harvey with the play, no pun intended. That is his legal birth name. And Harvey with his first career interception as a Wesley Cornet. And let's just say he got the maximum point value on that one.
Westlake's offense just had a 3 and out their first of the game. However, because of a great field position that Steve Harvey's interception gave them, they're still able to go for the easy field goal. Gods is 1 for 1 today, and that one curves in, making him 2 for 2 today, as in his first five games, he only made two field goals. However, in the past minute, he's made two field goals. Utah's last drive was not pretty. Only one play, an interception for Steve Harvey. Now it's third and one. And can Utah punch it in or will Westlake get the stop? White under pressure. White, he's going to scramble with it and he falls on his own power pretty much. He'd be easy first down. They're going to give the sack to Marcus Shelton. But if anything, y'all would just say he tripped. I guess Shelton was the one who technically tripped him, but still, that's all White's fourth fault. quarter underway. Westlake with a comfortable 34-10 lead. It'll be Nigel Wiggins in motion. He enters the backfield. It's going to be an option. Toss over to Wiggins. Wiggins has open running room. Welcome to the fourth quarter, everybody. That's Nigel Wiggins with a 54-yard rushing touchdown. Don't get to see that from him every day. And the Hornets will make it a four-possession lead, an increase for a lead to 31 points. Notre Dame indeed gets the win over USC. Nice performance from Donnie Scott, but Robinson's five touchdown passes, including two of them, two I assume his brother Robinson, lead Notre Dame to the big win. I know this game has sort of gotten out of hand. 41-10 to 10 is no fun for Utah, but credit to their fan base. There are barely any open seats in the stand right now, as they're about to make it 41-17. That's J.J. McClellan with his second touchdown score of the game. Utah's going to go for an onside kick, even though there's a good five and a half minutes left in the game. And I don't really blame him. Malik Brown does pick it up. Brown actually with space, and he brings it past the 30. So Westlake will retain possession. Westlake is pretty much just chewing clock now. They have this game under control. This here Savage on the run. He has a first down in space. Savage, can he get in? No, surprisingly, he only gets 28. Now it's first and goal from a one. Curtis tosses it over to Dante Savage for his second touchdown of the day. Looks like no one picked up the little orange post, but it doesn't matter because Westlake is already up pretty darn big. At this point in the game, Utah's just playing for pride. They're down by 31 points. Four uh, touchdowns plus three two-point conversions. So obviously it's pretty ugly for them at this point. Here's White. Over to Foster, and he is in the end zone. Five-yard scamper for Brandon Foster. And credit to Utah. They put up 24 points in this game, and they have kept fighting until the very end. There's still three minutes left, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see Utah coming back. And Utah will unsurprisingly go for another onside kick. It's worth a shot, right? As this one will once again be recovered. By Malik Brown. This time he does not really gain anything. This will be the final play of the game. Most likely, unless Westlake scores, which I doubt. And Savage does score. Westlake wanted to brag. Put on some extra points against their rivals. I don't think Westlake would have done this in a normal game, but they just wanted to make fun of Utah. As Savage with the hat trick, his third score of the game. And that is how this game ends. Westlake wins it 55-24. to Dominant victory for the Hornets. They decided to brag a little bit at the end, get Savage that late touchdown against their rivals. Hornets will improve to 5-1. and one. Utah goes down to 2-4. and four. And This is a statement game for Westlake. I mean, coming off a loss to Baylor, they were facing adversity, and they did a very good job in this one. 55 points is a very high marker, and their defense was no slouch in this game. Most of Utah's points were in garbage time for the most part, so all-around great win for the Hornets against their rivals. Have a good one, everybody. Hey, hey, man.